God bless you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Worship the Lord with singing. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. God bless you. Welcome to our uh, worship, uh, our uh, worship for today. We're thankful that you are here. We praise God for our virtual worship service. I know this looks a little bit different than what we are used to, uh, but brothers and sisters, we are thankful that we have the opportunity to worship God in spirit and in truth. This is a different cadence, a different rhythm uh, for us today. So if you all would allow Pastor Letcher, allow Pastor Letcher to move from uh, charisma preaching, which is that energetic preaching with the call and the response uh, uh, to a more didactical preaching, that preaching that uh, gives information uh, and we and we would be indebted to you. We thank God again for you. So brothers and sisters, we want to just, I, I know that we don't have our uh, praise team today. So Pastor Letcher is going to do the best he can uh, in trying to move us into the spirit of worship. So if you would sing with me just a, a verse or two of, of Pass Me Not. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble sisters, it is now the call to worship. I pray that wherever you are, you are centered uh, and you are ready to worship. Welcome pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. It is worship time. I know that you are in the privacy of your own prayer ground, but there is still worship. There is still an opportunity for us to share a word from God. Amen. Amen. We want to pause for a word of prayer uh, for our parishioners and for uh, this time that we share before we jump into the word. God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for uh, Pleasant Green. And God, we understand the climate in which we are living uh, now. God, we pray uh, that uh, you continue to embrace uh, your people with a sense of protection God, give leaders a sense of guidance. And God, we pray that uh, each parishioner, although they are not in the pews, Lord God, that you give them intense relationship with you. Help them to understand what it means to walk with you daily as Enoch did. God, we pray now that some lost soul is guided to you. Uh, even through this time of virtual worship. God, we thank you. We praise you. We'll be careful to give you all of the honor and all of the glory and all of the praise. God, we pray that this message, uh, even though it is not in the same cadence as in-person worship, even though it does not have the same rhythm, as in-person worship, God, we pray that it helps someone. God, have mercy upon our members. Have mercy upon our friends and family. And God, we pray 
that as we move into the Thanksgiving Day season, uh, that we find reasons uh, to be grateful and to share gratitude and to uh, share a level of mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Again, brothers and sisters, welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, our worship service uh, at 1030. Again, this is a little bit different from what we are used to. We are out of the church building for just a few Sundays, but I appreciate and Pleasant Green appreciates uh, your patience and your poise uh, as we uh, offer you a space uh, that uh, is reflecting the excellence of God. Uh, we are thankful for you. Now, brothers and sisters, again, this is, uh, uh, it's time for preaching. Uh, and I want you to know again, again, the cadence is different. You know, in-person worship service is just unique uh, in that you have call and response. You have energy from the uh, the parishioners that help one preach. Uh, however, we don't have that today. Uh, but there is still a word from God. There is still a word from God. And brothers and sisters, uh, although the cadence and the rhythm is uh, different, I want you to know that as we are moving from a charisma style of preaching, we're moving to a didactical style of preaching. And one in which you listen to the word, you um, process it, uh, you listen, and then we move from there. So if you would, brothers and sisters, go with me to the word of God. Go with me to the word of God. Y'all know I love the new living translation. Uh, somebody say amen or something. Type amen. Put some hands up. Uh, we're just thankful that you are uh, here with us. Amen. So we're just going to kind of move into kind of a teaching mode. Uh, we're looking at Romans, Romans 12. I know we talked about Enoch this morning uh, for our worship over the wire. Uh, we talked about Enoch this morning on our worship over the wire. Um, but I think I'm led to, uh, as I talk to my virtual group, uh, I'm led to look at Romans 12, Romans 12, one through three. If you all would, uh, look, I know how hard it is to keep our attention, uh, on a virtual platform. So I'm not going to keep you long and I'm just going to share some particular pieces that may help strengthen us, uh, in our walk with Christ. All right. So therefore, we're going to Romans 12, 1 through 3. I wish I could call on you to read, uh, but I cannot. Uh, so therefore, Pastor Letcher will read verses 1 through 3. And again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads as follows. And so, this is Paul. This is Paul. And so, dear brothers and sisters, uh, and I want to add pleasant parishioners. He's talking to the people of God. He says, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you, all that God has done for you. Has God done anything for you? God has done something for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind of that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship God. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is the good and pleasing, perfect will of God. Uh, just for those of you all who are very uh, uh, staunch King James um, readers, uh, I do respect that. I also want to read it in King James Version. It says, I beseech you, 
therefore, brothers, uh, I, it's hard for me to just, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think more highly of himself uh, than he ought to, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man according to the measure of faith. Amen, amen, amen. And for the time that uh, we share together, I think this is precious time. Uh, I just want to uh, share just a quick lesson with you about what should be a part of your daily sacrifice unto God. What should be your daily sacrifice unto God? I know all of us, and I pray all of, of, of you in virtual land, we have some type of exercise in which we keep our body healthy. Uh, I pray that you have some type of spiritual exercise as well, uh, that you keep your spiritual body uh, or your spiritual person healthy. So this is what the Apostle Paul is sharing with us in how we can uh, keep our spiritual body healthy and how we can continue to sacrifice uh, to God the things that need to be sacrificed on a daily basis, right? On a daily basis. So every uh, day, every day of our lives, we should voluntarily worship God every day of our lives. Pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, we should voluntarily uh, or voluntarily worship God. We should worship God. We must recognize God's goodness. We must recognize God's provisions. And additionally, we must confess our sins. We must ask for forgiveness of our sins. And we must seek atonement, right? We must seek atonement for our sins. In this particular text, Paul is exhorting the citizens of Rome uh, that their right behavior and the virtue of their conduct is the acceptable everyday worship that God looks for in believers. In other words, brothers and sisters, he's saying that your behavior, uh, your conduct, uh, the things that you do every day is the right and acceptable um, worship uh, for God. Uh, we've got to get it right. The things that we do every day our behavior, our conduct is the acceptable worship before God. Uh, it talks about forgiveness. Forgiveness is important for the believer. Uh, I don't know, maybe someone has done you wrong or maybe someone has said something that offended you or maybe someone forgot your birthday. I don't know what it is. You know, people get upset about different things. But the word of God suggests that as a growing, maturing believer, we've got to learn how to forgive, right? Forgiveness is important in the life of the believer. Forgiveness is the act of excusing or pardoning others in spite of their uh, slights and in spite of their shortcomings and their errors. You know, I believe that this is one of the most difficult uh, things for a believer to do uh, is for us to understand how to forgive. But God calls us as believers to forgive. We've got to learn how to forgive. We've got to learn how to forgive. Even if someone has done us wrong, we've got to learn how 
to forgive. Also, uh, another piece uh, that I want to share with you is a, a, a word of definition. I know we always talk about atonement. Atonement is the act by which God restores a right relationship of harmony and unity between God's self and human beings. Uh, right? So let, let me say that again. Atonement is the act by which God restores a relationship of harmony and unity between God's self and human beings. Uh, if we look at that word atonement, it says at one mint, at one mint. In other words, we are at one mint through God's atoning grace and forgiveness, we are reinstated into a right relationship or at one with God in spite of our sins. So we thank God that God is the model. God forgives us and God loves us and God embraces us despite of our shortcomings, uh, despite of our sins. So we bless God for that. So I there is an objective for today. This is the objective for today, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. The objective for today uh, is uh, to discuss the daily sacrifices that believers should have unto God. That is to discuss the daily sacrifices that we as believers should have unto God, right? We are to have daily sacrifices unto God. First of all, I want to give you all just kind of a exegetical breakdown of the biblical text. Uh, if we look at Romans 12, 1 through 3, um, first of all, we know who the author is. The author is the Apostle Paul. Uh, around AD 57, uh, it is entitled uh, according to its recipients, right? The people he is writing to, right? In this case, the Christians who are in Rome, right? So if he was uh, writing to, uh, uh, it, it, just hypothetically speaking, if he was writing to uh, us in St. Louis, he would perhaps call it the epistle of St. Louis, right? But so here he is talking about uh, the Romans. He's talking about the Christians who are in Rome, right? So we want to have a couple of breakdowns of the scripture. Uh, uh, when we look at chapter 12, verse 1 through 15, it is an exhortation to live holy. It is an exhortation to live holy. I know a lot of us always say that I can't do it. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. But brothers and sisters, Paul exhorts us that we've got to strive toward a level of perfection. We, we can't just say that all, uh, I, I know that the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But that does not excuse us from trying to move to a level of perfection. We've got to try to live holy. You might cuss sometimes. Yeah, you, you may do that. You, you might uh, do some things that, um, uh, that perhaps uh, are not deemed as holy. But you've got to try. You've got to endeavor to move toward a level of of holiness. That, that's what uh, it means to mature in our walk with Christ, right? That's what it means to mature in the walk with, with Christ. So again, we're looking at the, uh, the passage breakdown. We're looking at the passage breakdown. Uh, first of all, verse one shares with us what should be done, right? Let's look at it. Y'all got your Bibles? I, I hope you got your Bibles. You got your U version. Uh, you got some type of scripture before you. Verse 1 shares with us what should be done. 
I beseech you that, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself as a what? I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. So first of all, verse one shares with us what should be done. And then verse one also shares with us whom should it be done by you, you, you. It should be done by you. And why should it be done? We look at that, and that's also in verse one. And we can have some conversation uh, about uh, why it should be done. And then we look at ways it should be done. Ways it be it should be done. And we find that in verses one and two. Ways it should be done. Are y'all following me? Put a hands up or amen or something so that I can know, uh, or a thumbs up so that I can know that you're listening and this is affecting the body of Christ, right? So five, five, what results occur because it is done? What results occur because it is done? So as we look at the text, uh, there are a couple of things that I want to highlight. There are a couple of things uh, that I want to highlight. Pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, what should be done is, first of all, there should be a level of consecration. There should be a level, write that down, write that down, y'all. We in Bible study on Sunday morning, write it down. Consecration should be a part of your everyday sacrifice unto God. Consecration. Consecration. In other, in other words, when I talk about consecration, consecration is the act uh, of setting apart or dedicating something or someone uh, or one's self to God's use. In other words, you're gonna, uh, if you're going to consecrate your child, uh, you're going to consecrate something, but I... What I would push you to do is, first of all, before you consecrate a child, before you consecrate something, consecrate yourself, right? Consecrate yourself. Set yourself aside for God's use. Set yourself aside for God's use. Uh, you may be saying, well, Reverend Letcher, I don't see that in the text. I'm glad you said that. Verse 1. Let's look at verse 1. Verse one says, I beseech you. In other words, I urge you, I beg you. Uh, this is that King James language, but it, it, it is what it is. I beseech you, I urge you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which, and he says, that which is your reasonable service, right? Uh, in other words, what I'm trying to share with you, pleasant parishioners, partners of PG, present all that you are and present all that you have to God. When you present all that you are, you won't have a problem with presenting all that you have, right? You see that God is moving in you through worship. Right? God is moving through you in worship. Worship isn't just what you do in church on Sundays. True Christian service and living must begin with personal dedication to the Lord. Oh, I'm about to shout by myself in this place. The Christian who fails, to, uh, who fails in life is the one who has failed at the altar, right? The Christian who has failed in life is the one who has failed at the altar. What do you do at the altar? You present yourself, right? You present who you are. Uh, when we talk about altar, uh, I, I know somebody's going to think about I, uh, Isaac, right? You present all you are to God. 
So the believer who fails in life fails at the altar. You fail uh, by not presenting to God all who you are, right? Uh, we refuse the one who fails in life. The, the believer who fails in life uh, is the one who refuses to surrender completely to Christ, right? King Saul failed at the altar. Uh, write this down. Uh, I know I can't engage with you. I, I really wish I could get somebody to read that verse. Uh, but we look at 1 Samuel 13. Uh, and eight, and then we'll go to uh, 1 Samuel 15 and 10. Um, and it cost him the kingdom. It cost him the kingdom. The motive for dedication, brothers and sisters, when you dedicate yourself to God, the motive for dedication is love. The motive for you to dedicate yourself to God is your love for God. And I will push further to say the motivation for you to dedicate yourself to a man or humanity is your love for God. Because God does not have you to hate man, right? <laughs> right? So, brothers and sisters, the motive for dedication is love. Paul does not say, I command you, but I beseech you. Because of what God has already done for you. Um, we don't serve Christ in order to receive God's mercies because we already have them. Uh, we see that in chapter 3, 21. Uh, we, we're going to move forward. Also, brothers and sisters, not only uh, is consecration key for the believer, Separation is sometimes key. Separation. God calls us to be separate. Sometimes God moves us to a place of separation. Do I have any witnesses here? Uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm suffering because I'm, I'm not hearing your call and response. I don't know what you're saying, but I know that this is what God has given me to share with you. We, we've got to separate ourselves. Uh, a separation should be a part of our daily sacrifice unto God. We see that in verse 2. Separation should be a part of our daily sacrifice unto God. I want to share with you uh, that second verse. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So at some point, we've got to learn how to separate ourselves. Be not conformed to this world. In other words, we cannot always do what the world does. We've got to be called to separate ourselves from the world, right? We've got to be called to separate ourselves from the world. Every Christian is either a conformer, right? Living for and like the world or a transformer, right? We are either a conformer. Y'all write that down. We're either a conformer or a transformer. We're, con we're a conformer living for and like the world or a transformer daily becoming like Christ. God calls us to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. God calls us to be like God, right? We are supposed to be like God. We are either a conformer or you're confirming to the world or you are or you are being a transformer. You're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. I just want to share with you uh, quick pieces. And y'all, I know y'all ready to get back to eating, doing what you do. And I know y'all got some turkeys that you trying to roast or fry or do you, you're doing all that but I, I just got a couple of things to share with you before you all get about your thanksgiving business 
The Greek word for transform is the same as uh, the one for transfigure in Matthew 7 and 17 and 2. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 tells us that we are to be transformed or transfigured as we allow the Spirit to reveal Christ through the Word of God. In other words, brothers and sisters, as you read the, God, the Word of God, you are to be transfigured and transformed. Nothing about you ought to be the same when you read the Word of God. Stuff ought to change about you. Your attitude ought to change. Your giving, your perspective on giving ought to change. The way you treat your neighbor ought to change. Your, hospital, your hospitality in the church ought to change. Everything about you should change if you are deeply engaged in the word of God. I'm feeling a preach coming on me. I'm, I'm trying to suppress it. I'm trying to suppress it. But also, brothers and sisters, there ought to be a transformation. Transformation should be a part of your daily sacrifice to God. You ought not be the same. On, if you really read the Bible, if you really follow Christ, you ought not be the same tomorrow as you even are today. The word of God ought to transform your life. Your, the word of God ought to transform your life. Y'all, I'm, I'm enjoying this word. I'm enjoying this word. I know, again, we are not in the same cadence and we're not in the same rhythm as we would be uh, in the church. And I know uh, many preachers rely on the call and response, as do I. I love calling. So I, I love to hear how the word is affecting you. But also, I think uh, the word of God uh, what should be something that uh, it is a part of our daily sacrifice to God. I think uh, our daily sacrifice to God should be observation. Observation, right? It's separation. Uh, we just moved from separation. We, we just moved from transformation. But also, I think it should be observation. Observation should be a daily sacrifice to God. The third clause of verse two says this. Uh, this is in, um, I have a few translations that I want to share with you all. First of all, I want to share with you the new King James Version says that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Message Bible says it like this. And it shares like this. So, that we can readily recognize what God wants from you and quickly respond to it. The Christian English, the common English Bible says it like this, so that you can figure out what God's will is, what is good and pleasing and mature. The Holman Christian uh, Standard Bible says it like this, so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and the perfect will of God. The Greek word here means to try to learn the genuineness of something by examination and testing, often through actual use, to test and to examine, to try to determine the genuineness of text. In other words, sometimes, brothers and sisters, we've got to have an experiential experience with God. We've got to have an experience with God. New Revised Standard Version says, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We've got to walk close enough to God to understand what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. And when we walk close to God, there is a separation, there is a transformation, and then there is an observation. I'm about to preach myself happy. I'm, 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 I'm getting to my close. I know y'all ready. I know y'all ready for me to close, but I'm getting to it. 
Some Christians obey God because they know that obedience is good for them and they fear uh, being chastised by God. Others obey God because they find uh, God's will acceptable. But the deepest devotion uh, is in those who love God's will and find it perfect or accurate for their lives. I push you pleasant parishioners and partners of PG to get to a place where you obey God because you feel like God's will is good and it is perfect and it is accurate for your lives. We need to discern the will of God at all times, but especially particularly in times uh, um, of fasting. And brothers and sisters, I want us to understand that fasting helps us to discern what God's will is. It calls us to be quiet before God so that God can point us in the direction that God would like for us to go. I especially challenge our church leaders uh, get to a place where you fast and you, when you fast, you will discern where Pastor Letcher is taking the church so that you can get in line uh, and be on one accord as God does not like for the church to have constant conflict, right? So we can move in the place where God has called us to be. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm not going to hold you too much long. There's, there's a few other things that I do want to share with you, but uh, I've, I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. I think these things have been shared. So what I want to do is open up the doors of the church. The doors of the church are open virtually. Uh, the doors of the church are open if you would like to become a part of the body of Christ through the ministry of Pleasant Green, there are a couple of ways you can do that, and I want to share them with you. Uh, there are a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, first of all, brothers and sisters, uh, you can become a part of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church uh, by calling the church office. You can call the church office at 314 five three five uh seven five four eight and you can leave a message on the church office phone sharing with them that you would like to become a party uh, a part of the body of christ through pleasant green also brothers and sisters uh if you would like to become a part of the body of christ and you have not um uh, been at pleasant green you can um do it thusly uh, you can send an email to ghpruitt at gmail.com, ghpruitt at gmail.com. Whether you leave a message on our voicemail at the office or you leave it by email, brothers and sisters, we will return or we will respond to you expeditiously. We will return your, uh, we will respond to you as soon as possible, welcoming you into the body of Christ. I'm thankful for all of our guests. Now that we uh, have opened up the doors of the church, I am thankful for all of our guests. If there are any guests on um, our virtual worship service today, we thankful, we're thankful that you have come. We're thankful that you have come. We are thankful that you have come. Uh, we want to recognize all of our guests. If you are a guest, uh, we're thankful for you. You could have worship at any other platform across the world, but you were gracious enough to tune in to Pleasant Green. And for that, we are thankful. Just to share with our guests, we are a church who strives to become pleasantly purposeful for all people. Uh, and we do that through five tenets. 
Uh, we do that uh, through a relevant word, a relatable, a worship reaffirming relationship that yields radical hospitality. And we also do that through resolute giving and we are committed uh, to restorative community development. Brothers and sisters, again, we're thankful for you. Uh, also, we thank God for our uh, your, your continued generosity. Thank you for your continued generosity. Uh, the word of God says in Proverbs 3 and 9, honor God with your wealth and the first fruits of your income. Brothers and sisters, we are thankful for those of you who heard the word of God, who tithe and offer uh, and give generosity uh, to Pleasant Green. Um, and I want to share with you ways that in which you can continue to do that. Uh, you can do that uh, by sending a check or a money order to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church to our campus. Don't send money. Don't send money. Send a check or a money order to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church at 1220 REV GH Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri 63113. Send a check or a money order at to 1220 REV GH Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. We are thankful for your continued giving. Also, brothers and sisters, if you like, uh, you can drop it off at our mail slot at 1220 REV uh, GH Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Also, brothers and sisters, if you are technologically savvy, you can give, you can give, you can give digitally. Uh, at www.pgmbcstl.org www.pgmbcstl.org and you can click to the left there is a tab for giving and once you click on the left you can find uh, how you want to give and brothers and sisters, you can click there and give digitally. For that, we are thankful. With that being said, brothers and sisters, I pray that this worship service has been inspiring. And I pray that this worship service has been encouraging. And I pray that this worship service has been a worship service that is evoking you uh, to live a life that is pleasant or pleasing before the Lord. That being said, uh, y'all, come on, somebody say amen virtually. Somebody say amen virtually. Somebody say amen virtually. Amen, amen, amen. So we want to recognize a word of benediction at this time. Let's pause for a word of benediction. God, we thank you for our pleasant parishioners. We thank you for our families and friends. We thank you for the partners of PG. God, we ask now that you um, go with them for whatever they need. God, we ask that you be a doctor for those who are sick. God, we ask that you be a financial help for those who are in trouble uh, lawfully. God, we ask that you uh, protect each and every person who needs you. God, we pray that uh, we are pleasing in your sight. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And brothers and sisters, you all have a happy Thanksgiving. Y'all don't gain too many pounds. You want to do a little bit of walking after you eat all of that turkey and dressing. May God bless you until we see each other next Sunday.